Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. You don't know the power of the dark side. I have a tender spot in my heart for cripples, bastards, and broken things. What about second breakfast? I have an army. We have a hulk. I solemnly swear that I am up to no good. This is a tasty burger. Now tell him to suit up. I'm bringing the party to you. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Film Optics. My name is Christian, and finally, Devin has returned from his long-awaited uh, vacation. How, how are you uh, doing today, buddy? It's, it, I missed I'm you. Still, I'm still enjoying the wondrous weather of, of Northeast Ohio. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I know what you mean, man. It's like 70 degrees there for you, but yeah, it, snow going on here. Yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't been snowing here. I mean, it has been getting a little bit colder. Underneath, underneath the weather, but um, you know, it's hey, hey that's that's life. You know, as Robert De Niro says in Joker, that's life. But that's yeah, <laughs> yeah, man, it's uh, it's it's been it's been pretty quiet around here at the channel with you. We did a a little women review, had some uh, some of the Cin Cinemania World uh, team come on for that, and I think before that um, was our last. Uh, review together when we did um star wars the rise of skywalker so oh yeah this is a nice little way to kick off 2020 this is our first um podcast of 2020 uh still trying to figure out if we're going to do a uh, best of the decade podcast and you know it's it's 2020 you know it's, it's time for new movies to come out anything I, better i haven't gone to the movies in a long time it's yeah, weird. I know it's 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 been a while. Well, I think I, I, I try to go to the Solon uh, AMC as little as I can because <laughs> I know what you mean, man. That oh, man, you, you would think Solon would have a bigger movie theater. You know what I mean? Like they, they literally have everything else. They had Chipotle in Solon for like ages before you know we got it in our hometown. So, but hey, I mean. It is what it is, I guess. But yeah, um, before we begin today's podcast here, you can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, Anchor, and Stitcher. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Film Optics, and Optics is spelled O-P-T-I-X. And yeah, we're just going to be kind of diving into a few of these winners. We lit literally, the 2020 Golden Globes just ended about maybe 10, 15 minutes ago, and we're like, you know what, let's just hop on it let's record it's been a while and let's just start getting back into the groove of things i hope everyone who is listening had a wonderful holiday and uh, and a wonderful new year as well so uh yeah man let's just dive into this and actually before we begin really quick Devin and i did have a bet um from our oscar prediction um nomination podcast from a few weeks ago um telling out the score i'm like nine times out of ten sure that Devin won and the loser has to watch Aquaman <laughs> so I'm the loser did so Moa at the Globes looking yeah fly. I did look him fly man he's oh yeah. man anything that guy wears it's like he, he always stands out in, in in a giant crowd but yeah man I sat down and I watched the red car but it was great to see everyone's you know attire and all their get-ups and you know, everyone brought their family and friends to the event. And definitely, I would actually have to say that this is a lot better than last year's. Yes. A lot better than last there year's. There's no Bohemian Rhapsody this year. Oh, thank God. Thank God. So, there was definitely surprises <laughs> this year, but they were, like, better surprises. Like, yeah. Like, see that. Yeah, it wasn't like, oh, my God, are you freaking serious? A few of them was like, eh, well. But not not of the major ones. Um, yeah, nothing close to Bohemian Rhapsody. <laughs> that was atrocious, man. I swear, I swear. But yeah, uh, let's just get uh, straight into it here. So we're gonna start from you know the the cream of the crop. Um, you know, best um, motion picture drama. Um, and the nominees for uh, just really quick, it was between the two popes. Uh, Marriage Story, Joker, The Irishman in 1917, aka Netflix versus the world, pretty much. Uh, yeah. But a big surprise, 1917 took it home, and I was I like, need to see this movie. It is very good. It's like not even on the AMC app, I'm so pissed. Like it's not. It? I, I want. It's I wonder if it's. Yeah, because I mean they 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 kept uh, you know touting that it, it that it's you know out in majority of all theaters now. I know that um, it got a, a limited uh, theater Christmas release, but 
um yeah man this this movie you know i saw it i, I definitely want to see it again it's literally i think just under two hours you know it's it, it's a very simple story um it's very heartfelt it's very it's 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 anything and everything i wasn't even expecting from these war movies normally i don't care too much for war movies myself but this one i i just i loved it i mean you know the it's you know it, it's a quote-unquote continuous shot i mean yeah there are like a few small editing things that you can kind of notice but it's made to look like it's one continuous shot and that's very exciting. Yeah, that's and third, man. and uh, yeah, and you know Sam Mendes, he even said, you know, th this is a experience that um, that was made for the theater. That you have to see this in theaters, and I agree with that one hundred percent. But you know, everyone thought I thought it was going to be between Joker and Marriage Story, you know, the, the Driver and the Phoenix, and um, neither one won. And honestly, yeah, I'm kind of glad. I, I was just going to say off the top. Um, zero wins for Marriage Story or The Irishman. Yeah, That's I was shut out. Yeah, they really did. And Two Popes, nothing at all. I, I haven't even watched it yet. I hear it's good. I definitely want to check it out. Probably cleanse after I have to watch uh, Aquaman, but not, whatever. Not I'm kind of happy Irishman didn't get wins, but that's just oh, me. I, I was actually about to say the same thing. Like, literally, like, I, I get it. You know, it's Martin Scorsese. He's, he, he's literally quite possibly the best film director of, of our time. Um, you know, up there, uh, Quentin Tarantino as well. But, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of glad it didn't get any because it's, I mean, the, the runtime was... It, 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 it was a bit ridiculous like i'm sorry like yes i understand you know yeah i'm i'm happy that that marty's like you know opening up to netflix and you know all these other um outlets but three three and a half hours is way too long um especially just for a movie that has no prior built up like if you told me we're getting like a three and a half hour star wars movie for the rise of skywalker or obviously like if endgame was three and a half or any other major franchise of it i'm like yeah all right sure let, let's do it because you know we, we've been with these characters for so long with this it's just hey you know it's it, it's three hour movie it's you know it, it's, it's about the irishman and you know the the gangster life and whatnot um but yeah, it was entirely too long but anyway yeah 1917 congratulations sam mendez and everyone uh working on that project and i hope to see uh more from that uh th from from them in the future so uh do you want to head over to the best actress drama this uh, one probably was the biggest surprise of the night yeah, it really, really was. Honestly, you know, we had uh, between Cynthia Erivo, Scarlett Johansson, Sersha, my woman, Sersha, what happened? And even uh, 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 Theron, like Bombshell, I've, I haven't seen it yet, but I mean, I've, you know, I've seen her in other things. She's a phenomenal actor, but Renee Zellweger uh, took, took, took this one home. For a like, movie that no one's seen. Yeah, pretty much. I thought about seeing it one day and I was like, you know what? I just wasn't feeling it whatsoever. So, I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, this is definitely one of the biggest surprises of the night. Because I was like, oh man, I was like, you know, it's it's going to be between uh, uh, Charlie Z and Sersha and Scarlet for sure. Um, oh, honestly, with, with uh, er, uh, Erivo, I think she did a fantastic job in Harriet, honestly. I feel like she was the only good part of Harriet. But yeah, like, I didn't think Judy was going to win at all. I don't know. But a a any other thoughts on that? Or Yeah, I was all all in on ScarJo. I thought she definitely deserved some recognition for her mm. work in Marriage Story. Um, yeah, I really I got seen snubbed. Bombshell yet, and I haven't seen Little Woman yet. And no one in the world has seen Judy, so <laughs> honestly, no one in the world sees, has seen Judy. Especially, I would say more people saw Harriet than Judy. But no, no offense to Renee, but her speech was uh, pretty strange. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty strange for sure. Um, I mean, hey, it is. I mean, Joaquin made his a little bit long too, but yeah, he kind of—he was, uh, was definitely on something. Like, <laughs> I don't know. What was he going was. On, uh, he was he literally was just spouting the most. Like, around, like, what is people, he talking about saying, right now? People were asking if he was still playing as the Joker, <laughs> <laughs> trying to get back in the character. Yeah, I, I, I think it's fair between him and Christian Bale 
that they're uh, both done with uh, weight fluctuations. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. it's a, I, I would. That's so too taxing on your body. It's like I either want to be ripped or fat, like or somewhere in between, whatever, whatever. But yeah, I mean, congratulations to uh, Renee Zellweger. Uh, for winning best actress uh, actress drama, so I guess we'll just move on to uh, best actor for drama. Nominees were Christian Bale, Antonio Banderas, Adam Driver, Joaquin Phoenix, and Jonathan Price. And honestly, no surprise there. Joaquin Phoenix took took, took this one home, and it, it's it was the easiest decision for me when we were um, choosing for the list which ones. I think it, I actually just... chose Christian Bale. I'm pretty he sure just, he just went so all out and like everyone in that room you can just tell they all respected him because of yeah what he did for that movie yeah and the, and the longer I thought about it so you know I I think Joaquin definitely does I, I thought it was gonna it this for me would have been between you know driver Bale and Phoenix and I probably would have knocked it down between driver and Phoenix but hey I mean someone had to win and I'm, I'm actually really glad Joaquin won because you know especially for uh as comic book fans it's it's about time that we uh you know these these films start getting recognition that um you know they deserve a lot of people put their yeah, hearts and soul yeah marty um <laughs> honestly that that opening <laughs> between uh the golden globes with, with ricky that was that there were was a lot of scorsese jokes the whole loop the whole, oh, like, uh, yeah yeah it was it was great you know he, he made a butt out of pretty much every single joke that people were complaining about but i mean th that's just his nature and like how he is and even towards the very end he's like <laughs> he's like you know to go get drunk and go on your drugs and fuck off and <laughs> i was like all right like yeah he he can be a little much but i mean hey he, he speaks the truth like 100 percent. my biggest complaint about the awards were all the censoring they censored too much like you couldn't even tell what they were trying to say yeah oh yeah they, they like even if they like thought they were gonna say like a curse word they just cut off like half of yeah, their they, sentence just having the silence it's like what, what what is this yeah like i'd rather honestly have like a beep or something if anything because i think that's like way funnier than just like yeah, complete silence but i mean hey it is what it is man i don't know it's it's weird you know but um definitely a lot better than what andy sandberg and whoever uh, for whoever it was for all uh, the golden globes last year i think ricky did a, <laughs> a great job um <laughs> you know keeping i wouldn't say like keeping the peace but definitely keeping people interested <laughs> but um even with like tom hanks like he was like what's wrong with this guy <laughs> like he looks so distraught and just so like out of place and he was like mm. he's like i'm not sure how, how i'm feeling about you right now richard but i don't know but uh, anything else you wanted to touch on before we uh, transition over to the uh, next award? Yeah, another uh, little bit of a surprise, I'd say. Really? Okay, so I like I was I was surprised, but like it was a good surprise. Yeah, I was, I was okay with any of them winning. I thought I Rocket Man was going to take it home for best motion picture musical comedy, and that's what I was, we're. I was making knives out. And no, yeah, I was I was thinking between like at first I was like you know I wanted it to be. I wanted it to be either Jojo Rabbit, Knives Out, or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I was like, you know what? It's probably going to go to Rocket Man. And then I mean, so Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I was like, whoa, what? 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 Like, oh man, I was I was so excited. Like, I, I would have been I would have been happy for any of these um, in this category just because it is so stacked and it's like literally impossible to choose. Yeah, I, but, I watched Once Upon a Time in Hollywood the other day with my dad, and it definitely got better with a rewatch. Yeah, it it is. I, I don't. In any, you know, it's 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 a very mature movie. I think it's one of uh, Quentin Tarantino's. I think it's his most mature film that he's ever made. And so, there's just something about it. I just love it. Like you know, it's 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 just a day in the except, life of Hollywood. Except for the, beat. Except for the fucking beat. <laughs> Why? Why, Quentin? Literally in almost um, like any movie, dude. Like Uma Thurman, it, he definitely had it bad. <laughs> he, just, he has no shame. No shame at all. But like, I loved, uh, <laughs> loved Quentin's uh, his speech. He's like, 
He's like, you know, it's kind of odd because, you know, he, he wrote it and directed it. So it's not yeah, like, I don't, I don't know who to thank. <laughs> he's like, I, I did it myself. And everyone's like, oh, it's so arrogant. Well, I'm like, no, it's, it's not arrogant. He's telling the truth. Like, yeah, obviously he could not have made this film without, you know, the actors and the extras and the set pieces. But like he wrote it and directed it himself. So, yeah, I, that's kind of what Quentin does. I mean, it was, yeah. also, it was also kind of surprising seeing how excited um, Margot Robbie got. She like, oh yeah, you could definitely tell as soon as she opened that up, she got so giddy. But it's like you could just tell, what, like you know, when when it comes to making a film, and e- even even if an actor, um, you know, is part of the film, and you know, they seem to be having a lot of fun on set, but like you know, when it comes to the aftermath, some some people were just done. Like you know, John Boyega and Disney and Star Wars, he he's just done. As soon as he got that last paycheck, he just started spotting out oh, yeah, everything he, he is, could. He is not having it. He's just yeah, and I'm I'm pretty so much shade. And I'm 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 pretty sure you know Daisy Ridley has has gone through a few things herself, as well. But um, yeah, it's just you know I, I really enjoyed like you you could tell how much everyone on that crew for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood just enjoyed making that film, especially you know going off for Margot Robbie. She just she was just so giddy and just full of excitement, and that that that's that's what it's all about, honestly, to me yeah. at least. Like she she just had a grand time. But uh, moving on to Best Actress for Movie, uh, Musical, or Comedy. Excuse me, not Movie or Comedy. Uh, this one actually took a bit of a, a left turn for me, too. We had uh, between Emma Thompson, uh, Beanie Feldstein, Kate Blanchett, and Ana de Armas, and Aquafina for The Farewell, and Aquafina won for Best Actress. Yeah, I think this one got me the most hyped, honestly, because The Farewell deserves recognition. I did not think it. it was going to win anything at all. Nothing. I thought nothing. I was like, okay, you know. I was like, all right. I was I was rooting for Anna De Armas and then Beanie Feldstein because I, I haven't seen Where'd You Go, Bernadette, and I never even saw Late Night. And I was like, all right, we got we got three three people here, and I was like, holy crap! Like farewell. Didn't think it was gonna win at all, but I'm very excited and very happy that it did. Um, you know, especially with Bong Joon Ho when he won uh, for best foreign film. I think, saying, I think everyone who's seen that movie was so happy when when he got up on that stage. Oh yeah, he 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 deserved it. It, it was fantastic. Like, I I cannot wait to own that film and just watch it as many times as I possibly can. Because I, I you know we've only seen it we both only seen it once and I feel like it just gets it'll get better with the second time and yeah be a lot of more things that you know we um missed you know within our first viewing but. Yeah, congratulations, Aquafina, for winning for the farewell. And also, um, I think I heard it was the first ever Asian actress to win in this category. Which I is awesome. think you're right. I think you're right. I, from what I recall from pure uh, previous years, uh, I don't think that any uh, Asian actress has won in this category. So, kudos. I, I, I thought Ana de Armas had this like 100. percent I was like, yo, I'm like, what if Booksmart wins? I would lose it. I would lose to Devin. I would absolutely lose it. It, it would have been fantastic. But yeah, our, our little our little darling book smart. Yeah, <laughs> who allowed you to be this beautiful? <laughs> Man, I just that 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 film just radiates just just pure unadulterated just fun just. Man, what what it be like to be back in high school again? Well, probably not in today's world, but. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, uh, let's just transition over to uh, Best Actor for Musical or Comedy. We had uh, Daniel Craig for Knives Out, Leonardo DiCaprio for Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, Roman Griffin Davis for Jojo Rabbit, Eddie, Mur- Eddie Murphy for Dolomite Is My Name, and Taryn uh, Edgerton for Rocket Man. And Rocket Man took it home as well. This, this might have been the, the toughest category, to be honest. Very, very tough. Like, it, it's it's just where 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 do you even begin? I mean, no, Jojo Rabbit didn't win anything for, you know, Golden Globes. But, hey, I mean, it being nominated for, you know, recognition is enough. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I guess what were your thoughts about uh, this category? I I loved every movie in this category. I finally saw Dolly Mudd is My Name about a week or so ago. <laughs> and I was texting you about it. And I was just like, wow, this is... It's like, really awesome. good. <laughs> like, it's just... 
it was so cool. And then every other movie in that in that list is amazing too. And then all the actors are amazing. I thought Leo was gonna take it. I did too. Because Leo was just Leo and he does Leo <laughs> things. Yeah, that <laughs> he does <laughs> Yeah, that's well honestly when Daniel Craig and on on a day arms got on stage to like announce um you know they're kind of like promoting their their films you know since it's award season i seriously thought he was gonna do the accent i got like so excited i was like oh never mind he's not gonna I do suspect it foul foul play. Play. <laughs> he's just he's just like the most southern gentleman <laughs> i don't know man he cracks me up but uh, yeah congratulations uh taryn for uh taking home the rocket man um 100 deserved yeah i think I think Rocket Man was ten times better than Bohemian Rhapsody. Oh, was. absolutely! But there, there, there is no if ands or buts about like, it. Getting like half the love though, which is the depressing part. And you know what really bugs me is even with uh, you saw uh, sh- straight out of Compton, right? Because that came yeah. out like what maybe a year or two before Bohemian Rhapsody. That like was probably a few years back, but yeah. Okay, yeah, but um, it, it kind of bugged me because it was like. Between obviously, like you know, I feel like you can make the comparison anyway because they're both bi- uh, music biopics. Shredder to Compton was ten times better, way better than Bohemian Rhapsody. But Bohemian Rhapsody got the hype that um, Shredder to Compton deserved, and I don't know why. And now Rocket Man too. Yeah, yeah, and same, same with Rocket Man. I, I I don't know what it is, man. It's like you you get you get a guy who's a phenomenal actor and he can sing Elton John no less, and it's like come on, dude. Like it's yeah. it's it's a no brainer. But yeah, I'm I'm very uh, honestly anyone could have won in this category for best actor, and I would have been okay with it. Exactly. This is the one where it's like. It would have been. I would have been happy with any choice. Yeah, like it's not like they threw some random like movie in there, like Motherless Brooklyn or something, and ends up winning for like Edward Norton or something like that. But eh, it is what it is. But um, yeah. So moving on here to best supporting actor, we had Tom Hanks, Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood. We had Anthony Anthony Hopkins for The Two Pope. We had Al Pacino and Joe Pesci both for The Irishman, and we had Brad Pitt. For once upon a time in Hollywood, hey. and Cliff Booth took Cliff it home. Booth. The train has left the station. <laughs> oh, I was really happy about this one too. Uh, this one was a no-brainer was awesome. for me. Yeah, like I, uh, I just love the bromance, and it seemed like it's they have it in real life too. He, he could get up on stage and called them LCD. Yeah, I heard that before. But that was awesome. Yeah, it's Brad Pitt is just a guy who he's you know yeah him him and Leah are both definitely and. In in their later years of acting, but I wouldn't say they're checked out at all by any means. You know, they 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 can still you know work it, but um, I, I don't think there was anyone else on this list that what it, I, I it, like I said it was no brainer for me. I was like, okay, if I were to choose somebody else, probably would have been Tom Hanks, but you know that's just me. I haven't seen the two popes. Irishman, honestly, I I could I could completely just do without. So it is what it is there. So good riddance. The Irishman didn't win any awards, I don't believe, um, tonight. But yeah, Brad Pitt, uh, aka Cliff Booth, Mr. Stuntman, wife, wife, wife killer. Is what and he co- said he could have, he would have fit on that plank, just a little tight Titanic jab. Of him there. <laughs> he was um, his 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 acceptance speech was was great. Like it was just so flawless and so effortless, and he, he was it was just a great time. But um, so everyone listening at home, so we're going to be going into uh, covering one more nominee and then we're kind of just go over like any other nominees that we think that might be worth mentioning. And then um, we'll pretty much just close the show after that. Um, you know, we just kind of wanted to get our thoughts and opinions out there. You know, we didn't want this to be super long or super short because it's a little bit late um, in the night and uh, I've worked in the morning. So you know, I'm going to add, uh, edit this and get this out for you guys to listen uh, early in the morning. So let's just move on here uh, quickly, shall we? So um, best original score. It was between uh, Marriage Story, Motherless Brooklyn, uh, Little Women, Joker, and 1917. This one was actually very hard for me, especially now coming out of seeing Little Women on Christmas Day. Um I, oh man, and Joker won, and de- deservedly yeah. so. But it's like, I, 
honestly, e even with his uh, not seeing Brotherless Brooklyn, like it could have been any of those other four, and I and I would have been happy because it's like they're they're all great, fantastic choices. But I I will say with with the Joker score, it was very very Maybe, very haunting. Played it at, at the awards, just like yeah. Like, and I was just like, oh, that, it's very eerie. It it's very ominous. You know it's what I mean? Flood, it all flooded back to your mind. Like, yeah, yeah that, that was really good. It just takes you straight back to the bathroom scene because like that's when it like originally first starts. Like yeah. as soon as you know it goes ape crazy. But also Joker coming on Blu-ray on Tuesday, so I'm definitely going to be picking Ooh. that up. So. Yeah, man. Hopefully, I can get a steelbook case uh, at Best Buy because I think the yeah, cover on the steelbook case is a lot, lot better there. But um, so yeah, those are uh, majority of, or I should say, the major um, uh, nominees there. But was there any um, any other uh, categories you wanted to touch on? I know that um, actually, I wanted I wanted to throw one out there really quick with a. Uh, Bong Joon Ho, Bong Joon Ho, when he he won for best um, foreign film, and his yeah, his that, that was the easiest category of the night. Like, yeah, I, I hear Porsche Porsche. Lady on Fire is actually very good as well. Yeah, I heard but, the, all the other ones are good, but I mean, Parasite is Parasite. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely, man. He, he, even with his speech, when he's like, you know, if if you can get past like the one inch like um subtitles like on the bottom of your screen yeah you shouldn't let that restrict your your movie experience. right and like for and, and like and i get it like for a lot of people like yeah it's like yes it can be very distracting but like if, if you're watching a foreign film where you you, you need it to know what's to, you know what's going on it, it doesn't become an issue then um it, you know but like obviously like you know if, if you're hard of hearing then yes you know, like always, like I would definitely always have, you know, subtitles on. Like, yeah, they can be distracting, but honestly, after a while, some people were like, oh, you know, I can't read and watch at the same time. I used to watch a lot of anime growing up, and a lot of it wasn't um, Japanese. Uh, it it gets it gets to the point where like you can follow along so like effortlessly, and it actually forces you to pay attention instead of like you know like. If if you're doing homework or whatever, clean up around the house. If you throw a TV show on, nine times out of ten, it's probably going to be a sitcom or The Office. So if you've seen like a thousand times, it just becomes like white noise. With this, you're actually, you know, it's forcing you to pay attention and forcing you to actually hear and you know uh, listen to what the characters are actually saying. But um, yeah, what was there any other? Uh, were there any other you know nominees or categories? You wanted to uh, touch base on any others that kind of threw you for a loop any shout outs you wanted to give i was kind of hoping for bong joon ho to win best director as well but i totally understand sam mendes winning because his was definitely the most technically impressive of all the nominees so that mm -hmm. makes sense um fleabag got a few wins i was happy to see that oh yeah I yeah enjoyed fleabag. yeah they were like what like two maybe i think it was two of them they they, they cleaned they cleaned house at the uh the the emmys as well i was like oh my gosh that was insane but um I'm trying to think i actually this one i wanted to touch on and that was uh best animated film um that one was the biggest surprise <laughs> yeah, i was like what <laughs> like missing, missing link like, like even like the director was so surprised that they won for best animated feature. I was like, okay, yeah, Frozen 2, Toy Story 4, Lion King. And Lion King, by the way, was not submitted by Disney. That was the Hollywood Foreign Press Association all by themselves. I don't know why, but the only two that Disney, you know, put in first consideration was Frozen 2 and Toy Story 4. I personally was rooting for How to Train Your Dragon, the, hi <clears throat> the Hidden World, just because you're like, yeah, like I, I, I love Toy Story 4, and that was probably going to be like my second choice. But I, I really did love How to Train Your Dragon, H Hidden World. It was, it, it was, this is a great film. It looks amazing. I think it's one of uh, DreamWorks' uh, best properties uh, next to Shrek, and I guess you can say Kung Fu Panda. But um, yeah, I mean, congratulations to Missing Link. I, I haven't seen it. Uh, 
I was very, I was just as shocked as, you know, the creators are like, wait, what? Are they trying to pull a prank on us? Like, the guy really looked like he's like, you know, yeah, I'm here because our movie got nominated, but I don't really expect to win anything. And then he did. So it's like, cool. I don't know. But um, also, I wanted to touch on uh, the best screenplay uh for once upon a time in hollywood's one who won uh, i was up against a uh, parasite two popes marriage story and the irishman um it, it's 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 been taking taking some stuff home man it's what it had like three awards throughout the night three, three of the biggest ones yeah th- yeah three of the biggest ones um but yeah again you know congrats there i i yeah, feel like we've already touched on how much we uh, love that movie but uh was there any other um any anything else you wanted any comments questions or concerns you wanted to uh, touch on or did you uh before we uh, wrap up i think that's it all right man well everyone thank you for listening at home you know we've it feels like we've been away forever but about what five six days ago uh we did our mar- uh not marriage story review excuse me uh little women review which i really really adored uh, myself and I definitely want to see it again but there's a few other movies that I saw the catch the tail end uh, from 2019 and you know 2020 like the movies already started coming out with the grudge um, definitely not going to see that I will I want to see uh, Just Mercy for sure um, possibly underwater I don't know we'll see but um, yeah we'll you know we'll, we'll let you guys know the next thing that we cover here you know we're kind of just Playing it by ear right now, you know, uh, Devin's still uh, back in the uh, the cold tundra up north. So, um, you know, as soon as he gets back, we'll definitely be more back to our uh, normal swing of things. Uh, hopefully we can do our best to the Decade podcast, maybe, because I think that'll be really cool. Um, you know, it'll be our, our first one as well. You know, kind of wanted to try that out. And we have a few responses from the people who have, you know, uh, been putting in their, our audience out there has been putting in their top five of the um of, of, of their favorite movies as well but um again everyone you can listen to us on spotify anchor google Podcasts, pretty much any major platform out there if you can think of it nine times out of ten we're on there google play yes uh, we're on podbean apparently Devin. don't know sure. how that happens but and we're also like on cast box box overcast and um all those great uh services over there as well and i believe that does it uh for now thank you Devin, always for coming on you know it's wanted to get this out there for the people to listen to and we will see you guys in the next one peace